You're listening to Frank Talks, Pleasures and Lifestyles. I'm Frank, because I have to be. We are in the third and final segment with this great interview, our, one of our very first pre-recorded editions of Frank Talks, with Mr. Maitre Bernard Corbet. Welcome back, Mr. Corbet. Hi. And um, in, in the last part of this interview, you were talking about how you spent a thousand plus hours uh, doing research and, and working on this particular court case and you only asked for two hundred dollars instead of two hundred thousand dollars I'm guessing it could have been even more than that and uh, could you please elaborate on that a little bit yes you want to know what I did uh, during those one thousand hours or more absolutely uh, yes it's very easy to, to answer first you have to understand that uh, that's uh, a, a trial who was uh, spread and on more than one year uh, and we spent in fact something like 30 days in court so every time you interrupt the cross-examination or the evidence you postpone it uh, you have to reread the, the hundred and thousand of pages uh, of uh, transcripts and prepare for the cross-examination and uh, so if you work during two uh, two weeks on a, a subject or two days on a subject and uh, three months later you have to come back on the same subject, same topic. Uh, that means you need a preparation. So you have to spend uh, something like maybe uh, more than 10 or 20 hours in preparation for one day in court, which means uh, between eight or ten days, at, at eight to ten hours a day. You have to meet with the witnesses. Uh, you have to meet with the other uh, uh, the other lawyers who are working in the, the file. You have to prepare the question. You have to make sure that you do not repeating the question of the other. You have to uh, uh, analyze the expertise. We have to prepare the, the, the question uh, with the expert for the survey. Uh, we had to uh, explain the survey to the uh, psychologist and uh, sexologist. We had to prepare those expertise. We have to uh, analyze them. Uh, and uh, we have also to uh, go in court and uh, make the, the evidence. Uh, and it, there was uh, a lot of evidence also to, to uh, read and watch, like there was, I think, uh, something like eight or ten videotapes. Uh, there was uh, uh, dozens of pages of police report. Uh, and in that case, they, they, they had two bus, one in a private home, one in, in a in a uh, in, in a club, uh, so we had kind of double work to do, okay. And uh, after the finish, the the, the, the trial was over. Uh, we had to uh, prepare the argumentation, and I personally uh, uh, filed 150 pages of arguments. Okay, that means that after all those 30 days spread uh, on one year and few months, you have to reread all that, you have to get the the, uh, the CD from court to make copy of extract you want to pick up uh, once a, a, and page 100 uh, uh, the, the, the second day and mix it with the answer of cross-examination on the day 28 at such hour the day to make sure that the, you, you're getting the same, the, 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 the facts uh, straight for the court, you know, and uh, so it's something very complicated to do. And also, uh, the other thing is that uh, uh, you have to, uh, to answer the, the argument of the other lawyers, uh, the, the Crown Attorney, and uh, after, so it, it takes time to, to do that, okay? Uh, and, af and, and after that, uh, you have to take into consideration that because it's a very difficult topics uh, to uh, legally fight uh, and clarify. We had to, to read a uh, thousand of pages of judgment, the previous judgments, to make difference, to, to get the similarities and to show that uh, it was legal uh, and there was never a survey and that type of, this, of accusation before, what is the tolerance of the society. Even the, the definition of what is a common body house is so complicated, legally speaking, that uh, we had to to go through a lot of jurisprudence or judgments, if you wish, through the years 
uh, for the last 100 years, and mainly for the last 30 or, or 50 years. Uh, and that's why it's a lot of work. <laughs> Based on all of your research, and um, this is a question that so our, if our listeners are uh, wanting to uh, experiment and maybe uh, host what could be called a group sex party in their own homes, they want to invite over a few friends, uh, maybe they put an ad out in a paper to, to meet some people that they want to um, experience with, uh, and they want to have, let's say, an, uh, an orgy in their own homes. Based on all of your experience, what would they need to do to protect themselves legally so that their neighbors don't start calling the cops on them? Okay, uh, the answer is not easy to give because there are so many uh, details that you have to check, but uh, if we want to give a straight answer and clear answer, uh, understandable for everybody, the first thing is that it has to be private, meaning that don't get confused between something private and uh, something residential. Your residence is something usually private, but if you put ads in the newspaper and you solicited the public to come to your home to have sex, uh, there's a risk that uh, if you do that at several times, uh, then it becomes a business and then you will have two problems. First, you are doing a business maybe in the uh, district area of the town that where you're not allowed to have any business. You have no license to do that. The other thing is that uh, if you are soliciting the public that way, uh, so your private residential uh, or private home could become a public place. And then if you have sex in public, it's not uh, legal. Okay, so you can do whatever you want in private at home uh, and uh, uh, the judgment we got in July 2003 uh, uh, has been wrongly interpreted, uh, like meaning that you cannot be more than 10 people and you have to uh, to have sex in a locked room. Uh, that is not true. If you have a home where you can get 200 people or 1,000 people, or whatever the, the people you want to have, as long as it is private, it is perfectly legal. It's not a question of uh, quantity, it's a question of access and solicitation of the public. And uh, the other thing is, according to some law and some provinces, uh, you have to take into consideration uh, the, uh, the alcohol uh, you can serve or bring. Uh, you, if you want to sell, you need a, a, a license to sell, but you don't need a license to serve uh, if you serve it at your home and your residence or in your uh, business places. So the, 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 the four uh, main words to remember is to make to the, the difference between uh, what is residential, uh, what is private, what is commercial, and what is public. And usually uh, a commercial place is, uh, uh, admits the public. Uh, and that's what we have to clarify. Could we have a commercial place which could be private? And there's no, uh, no law forbidding that. And uh, that's why the uh, the private place could be, uh, uh, sorry, I mean the, uh, the the swing club could be uh, commercial and private as well, okay. And as long as there are some conditions like membership card, but not only a membership card. You know, any club, a striptease club, could provide you with a, a, a membership card saying that you are a member, but it doesn't mean it's going to be private. It depends, and it depends on one major thing that the judge said in that judgment, uh, is that uh, it's the, uh, the entirety of the concept or the design which count, not only, only one thing. You, you could put some advertising in the newspaper, uh, letting them know that you're not soliciting the public but only the swingers, and when, even if you solicitate them, when they come to the club, if you have some rules, uh, and you take control and you, 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 you get them to sign an agreement. Uh, it's like a contract between adult and then you decide uh, who can come and who doesn't come. And uh, so you can keep your place private. That's the main thing. Bernard, this has been a most amazing interview. I want to thank you for coming by and, and agreeing to do this. Thank you for coming by. And thank you very much, Frank, to give us the opportunity to uh, educate people, to let people know that uh, uh, lifestyle is something very, very pleasant, and that's why uh, it's always uh, growing uh, and growing up. Uh, and now we have plenty of clubs coming in in Montreal, so uh, you're welcome to uh, 
visit us anytime. Break Talks is sponsored in part by Everything Out of Her Mouth is a Test, a man's guide to the emotional needs of women. Ladies, do you want the man in your life to understand you on your level? Do you want your man to be able to listen to you and address all of your emotional needs? Show him how much you really want your relationship to be the best it can be. Everything Out of Her Mouth is a Test makes a perfect gift. The book written by a man, for men, is endorsed by every woman that reads it. This book is a guide for men to understand exactly what a woman means when she speaks. Is that worth changing your life forever? Buy this book at franktalks.com now.